what shall we talk about this morning over together? Will you please request you to say something about the energy of consciousness? The energy. Would you talk or talk over together the energy that you talk about? Uh, what do you mean by observation? We generally observe after the event and not observe as it is taking place. Is that what you mean, sir? Yes. Any other? Sir? Well, uh, just... <laughs> Can one learn about oneself through through self-observation? And relationship with others. Can one learn through relationship with other others about oneself? That's what that's the question. Yes, sir. Sir, sir, sir. Silence is a fact, and could we go into it, enlarge it, and see the depth of it, and the meaning of it? And the emptiness field. Could we go into the emptiness field? Emptiness. Could we go over together, talk about that which you have said about emptiness? What? And continue the question of registration, whether one register or not. Oh, question of registration, whether one should register or not. I wonder if you were here the other day, sir. I think we discussed it two days ago or day before, and I hope you will not mind if we go, don't go into it, because we went into it pretty thoroughly. Talk about energy of violence. Come on, Mera. Le disordre. Uh, can one be aware of oneself at the same time observe one's disorder? That's it, sir. If we shouldn't discipline and shouldn't make an effort, but we should work on ourselves, how, I don't understand not to discipline and not to make the effort, but still be working on ourselves. Can you make that more clear? Can you make, talk over together? About effort and discipline and Without effort, can one observe oneself? Now, just a minute, please. We've had so many questions. I don't know whom you are asking these questions, because we are asking these questions of ourselves and trying to find a solution, an answer. So these are the questions. Energy. Can one learn about oneself through relationship and learn, and also what do you mean by that word learn? Can one learn about oneself through relationship and, and what do you mean by learning? The other is talk about emptiness. Silence. I think that's about all. Ah, 
And that lady points out, can one observe oneself in action? And that lady put a question, which is to why should you know, effort and discipline seems to go together? And you apparently point out a different way of observing, acting. So, which of these questions shall we take? The last question, you also point out you must do it. But it seems to be a, like a, a contradiction. contradiction. You also say you must do it. That is, test it out. Test it out, test out what is being said in, you, in one's own life and not depend on somebody else. Now, which of these questions should we talk about? <laughs> Learning and what do you mean by re can one learn about oneself through relationship? Now, which of these questions would you like to talk over together? Silence, emptiness, relationship. All right, I think we can all bring it all together in talking over this question of what is learning and can one learn about oneself in any kind of relationship. And perhaps if we could go into that rather deeply, we might be able to answer these several questions about energy silence, discipline and effort, and can one observe without any effort and discipline, and is it possible to be aware at the same time when one is acting conscious, right? And silence and so on. Can we bring all of this into this one, base, one question which has been put, what is learning? And can one learn through relationship? Can we can we take that go into that and bring all the other factors into it? May we? All right. What do you what do you, we mean by learning? I think this fairly important question, if we could go into it rather slowly and carefully. We learn from books. We learn from parents, colleges, universities, and so on. And also we learn through experience. We learn through various forms of events, which all become knowledge, right? That's fairly clear, that we gather information, experience, and various forms of events and incidents that happen to our, in our life. And from all this, we accumulate knowledge. And from that knowledge, we act. Right? That is one way of learning. Is there another way of learning at all? That's what we are. We know the ordinary way of learning. Is there another way of learning? Because the ordinary way of learning, the implications of learning in the ordinary way, is to accumulate knowledge and act according to that knowledge. Therefore, that learning helps us to become more and more mechanical. I don't know if you follow all this. May I go on with it? I, this is not a talk by me. <laughs> we are sharing this thing together. So please, uh, I can go into it, but you will also have to join in, in the investigation of what we mean by learning. So it's your responsibility too, not just mine, talking about it. The ordinary, everyday form of learning is to accumulate 
through experience, <coughs> events and accidents, and so on, a great deal of knowledge. And that knowledge is always the past. There is no future knowledge. Right? And if we act according to that knowledge, it must be action based on the past, based on knowledge. And that knowledge can be expanded infinitely or to a certain extent, but it will always be limited, it will always become a routine, mechanical. So we are asking if there is another way of learning. Learning through accumulation of knowledge, I mean, acting according to the accumulation of knowledge, it's acting and acquiring knowledge from that action, or having acquired knowledge through various forms, act from that. You follow? Do you understand? Do I, am I making myself clear? Yes. That is, I accumulate knowledge about science, about technology, doctors and so on, accumulate it. And then from that accumulation I act. Or act and through that action learn. And having learnt a great deal through action, that also becomes knowledge. So both are the same, essential. Accumulate, have no, acquire knowledge and then act, act and from that action accumulate, which becomes a knowledge. So essentially both are the same. Both tend to become mechanical, if this is clear. Then the question is, is there a way of learning which is non-mechanistic, I don't know if you are interested in all this. To find that out, we must be very clear that the mechanistic activity of accumulated knowledge and the whole movement of that one must be very, very clear in oneself. Would we proceed? Please, as we are talking over together, do, find out how you learn. Whether this learning is becoming more and more and more mechanistic. You hear me, the speaker, read about it, listen to tapes, learn, accumulate wisdom, knowledge, and then say, well, I'm going to practice that. Therefore, that practice becomes mechanistic. Now we are asking, is there a different movement which is not mechanistic, which is, which is also learning, but is not accumulated knowledge and acting from that? Right? Is this clear? May I? Yes, that which is still mechanistic. Yes. You try to get rid of that past knowledge which you have mechanistic. That is not the way to learn. So you learn, you go, you learn in a different form, but yet accumulate. Yes. This accumulation process goes on all the time. So we are asking, please, is there a different way of learning which is not accumulative? which is not mechanistic, which is not all the time functioning on the past movement. Right? We're going to find that out. Don't please inquire, question, challenge, all the rest of it for yourself and find out. We said very clearly, action 
and then knowledge. Knowledge and action are both essentially the same. Now we are asking, is there a different learning? Don't jump to conclusion. Don't say spontaneity. Don't say it is intuition. Don't let us be caught in words. Is there a way of learning which is not mechanistic? Uh, not, but you see, you are jumping. Don't come. It is as though you don't know. Begin. Wait, Madame, we are coming to that yet. We are starting. See, is there a question mark? Therefore, you don't know. So, don't say is silence uh, this or that. You really don't know. So that is the way to find out. With a clean slate, you don't know. So you're going to find out. Are you quite sure you don't know? Or you pretend you don't know? <laughs> no, please, for oneself, I'm talking of oneself seriously. Do I pretend that I don't know? Or I actually don't know a way of learning, perhaps learning then has a different meaning, a way of learning which is not mechanistic. I don't know. I have to be terribly honest to myself. Then I can find out. But if I say, yes, I don't know, but I have few ideas about it <laughs> behind me, mine, then you are. You're not inquiring at all. So, can we start honestly by saying, I really don't know? Which is rather difficult. Because when you don't know, you are looking, you're trying to find out if you know. You understand my question? When you say, I don't know, but there is always the desire to find out, or expect to be told, or project some hidden hope, and that becomes an idea, and say, yes, I have been to capture it. So if you can be free of, of all that and say, I actually do not know, then you are curious. You are really curious, like a young boy or a girl learning for the first time. You got it? No, no, see what's happened. Do, do watch yourself, sir. Don't look at me or in, watch yourself. Which is when you say, I really don't know what has taken place. Your mind is not actively thinking out how to find out, right? You've, are, we, are we meeting each other in this point? Say, for instance, I really don't know, which means I have no hope of finding it. I have no conclusion. I have no motive. This is very important. When I say I don't know, in that is implied having no motive whatsoever. Because motive then gives a direction. And then I'm lost it. So I must be very, very clear and terribly honest in myself. To say, I really don't know. Wait, sir, listen to it carefully. I really don't know. Then what has taken place in my mind? Do find out, don't answer quickly. (laughs) 
has indeed broken away from the old tradition. You see? The old mechanistic tradition. And I say, I really don't know. I've, I moved out of that field altogether. Right? Although I don't think that one thinking in terms of not knowing a new way of learning, all that one knows is that the conflict which mechanistic knowledge causes, just that, one doesn't know anymore. And one, one can see that one doesn't know how to get over this conflict. No, I'm, I'm, we're not talking yet a conflict yet, sir. We'll come to that in a minute. We are talking about, is there a different... process of learning? If you don't know it, I don't know it. And I actually say I don't know it. What has happened? Huh? If I don't know it, I am empty. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> How sick people are! Why is it stupid? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say stupid. I said silly. Because we are not paying attention. You're gone. It's empty. Is it empty? Or is it so tremendously free of that mechanistic, it is totally awake? Because it's intensely curious to find out. You see the difference? The mind that says, I don't know. Wait, let me take an example. Do you know what God is? Of course, you have beliefs, you have dogmas, all kinds of conditioning, but actually, you don't know that. You can invent about it, you can think about it, you can argue about it, or be against it, but the actual fact you don't know. So you start with not knowing in order to find out. Yes, that's what I'm saying now. Is this what you do when you come, when you come into this tent? Is this what you do? Is this what you are you completely free of what you've known before about that? I please I don't prepare talks, I don't do anything, I just come. And I spill out. <laughs> <laughs> I have prepared talks, written them all out carefully, and so on, so on. And one day somebody suggested, throw away all your notes and talk. So I did, and began that way. There's no distance, though, is there, really? Huh? There isn't a lot of distance between having it written down on paper and having it written down inside. No, I don't write it. The question hasn't been answered. I'm doing it now. <laughs> Please. You follow. When you say actually you don't know, you have stopped the mechanistic process of, of learning, haven't you? So your mind is not empty. It is free from that which it has been in, in which it has been functioning. And therefore it is now in a state of acute attention learning, acute l state, free from that, then what takes place? Hunger. You try it. Please try it. Please do try it as we are talking here. Do it, in a sense, attempt to find out. 
Huh? Inquiry. Yes. No. What does inquiry mean? Inquiry implies that you must be free from your prejudice, from your hypothetical conclusions, from any form of opinion, so that your mind is free to move. In the same way, if you are free from the mechanism, if you understand the whole nature of this mechanistic acquisition of knowledge, then and if you are, if you are put it in its right place, you are free from it, and then you you are then capable of complete attention, aren't you? Huh? When there is complete attention. Is there a learning? No, please, this requires a little bit going into. I may be rather stupid this morning, and so please forgive me if I keep on persisting in this thing, but perhaps come back to it a little later. The question, next question in that is involved, can I observe myself through relationship? Can I know myself fundamentally, basically, all the reactions, all the, the nuances, the subtleties of myself in relationship? Right? That's the question that was raised. So we have to inquire, what do we mean by relationship? The word itself, to be related, to be in contact, to be uh, not physically intimate, but not only that, but to have a relationship at the same level, at the same moment, at the same intensity. Then there is a relationship. Right? There is a relationship between a man and a woman, or a friend and another, or a boy and a girl, when they meet, not merely physically only, but much more, which is when they meet at the same level, at the same moment, with the same intensity, there is actual relationship. Because they are meeting, at the same level, right? That's what we. That can be called a real, true relationship. Now, my one's relationship with another is based on memory, right? Would you accept it? On the various images, pictures, conclusions I have drawn about you and you have drawn about me, the various images that I have about you, wife, husband, girl, or boy, or a friend, and so on. So there is always image-making, right? Are we, this is simple, this is normal, this is actually goes on. When I'm, when one is married or lives with a girl or a boy, every incident, every word, every action creates an image. No. Are we clear on this point? Don't agree with me, please. I'm not trying to persuade you to anything, but actually, you can see it for yourself. A word is registered. If it is pleasant, you purr, it's nice. If it is unpleasant, you immediately shrink from it. And that creates an image. The pleasure creates an image, the shrinking, the withdrawal creates an image. So our rela actual relationship with each other is based on the on various subtle forms of pictures, images, and Conclusions. That's right. Now I'm asking, when that takes place, what what happens? The man creates 
the image about her, and she creates image about him, whether in the office, whether in in, in the in the field or <laughs> anywhere. This relationship is essentially based on this formation of images. Right? Do we see this effect? Isn't it? Can we go on from there? Then, what takes place? You have an image about her, and she has an image about you. Doesn't matter where it is. In the office, in the factory, in the field, in every way labour, there is this image making all the time. So when there is an image like that, she has and you have, then in there there is division. And then the whole conflict begins. Right? Where there is division between two images, there must be conflict. Right? I want. Why has image become so important? We'll go into men. First, don't first go into step by step. Not come to say why. We have you got this image about your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, your father, your whatever it is. Then see if there is when there is this image, there is certainly a division. The Jew and the Arab, the Hindu, the Muslim, the Christian, the communist is the same phenomenon. Right? When that takes place, there must be fundamentally conflict. The husband or the boy or the girl may go off to work, and there he has created him images about himself, his position, his worth, his competition, and all the rest of it. Comes home and says, "Darling, how are you?" Hmm? And again, he has got his image, and she has hers. So there is conflict. So. It's a basic law that where there is division between people, there must be conflict. Full stop. Right? The man may say to the woman, or the woman may say to the man, "I love you," but that's merely be maybe a sensory love, sexual love, but basically they are not related at all. They may wear rings and hug each other, sleep in the same bed, and live in the same house. But basically, he's pursuing his ambitions, his greed, all the rest of it, and she also. Right. So, basically, they never meet at the same level at the same time with the same intensity. Cannot. Right. Do we see this? Not accept my the words that are spoken by the speaker. That's worthless. Actually, this is so in daily life. And then we can say to each other, "I love you. You are so beautiful, and you are this, and you are that, and put more colour on your hair. We not play with all that kind of stuff." Now, why do we create these images? Why do you create create an image about your girl or your wife or your husband or your boy? Why? Huh? Survival. I think it's through fear. Basically, the religious mystery. He says that it's survival. Because it's to guard one's what? ego. What? To guard one's ego. One doesn't want to be intruded on. One doesn't want someone 
close, one's frightened to lose one's ego. Oh, what you is that so? I don't know. <laughs> What's that? Because we don't see the whole. How can I see the whole if that's what you are saying? The whole beauty of relationship, the whole nature of love, and all that, when we are so concerned about our beastly little selves all the time. Come on. Isn't it because we are registering? No, Madame, we've been through all that. I want to forget the registration, look at it anew. Why do I, or why does one, create an image about another? Why do you create an image about the speaker? Just go into it, sir. Why do you create an image about your girl or your husband, boy, and all that? Why? <laughs> do look at it before you answer. See what you do first. Be, a, if I may gently suggest, see why the fact of it first. Not say, well, this is it, this is that. Just see if it is so. Do look at it, sir. I have. You are married. You've got a girl or a boy, a husband. The regist- this image making goes on, and I'm asking, why? Take time, little. Please, <laughs> you don't know. I don't know. Let's find out. It's very pleasant to have an image. Huh? Is it, is it very pleasant to have an image? Very gratifying. Is it very pleasant to have an image? No, please, sir. Uh, image. All I, I won't use the word image. Use some other word. I want to find out why I create the image about my wife, if I have one. Is it habit? (coughs) Is it convenient? Is, Is it immemorial conditioning? Is it a traditional that I do this? Brought over from the genes and so on and so on, that instinctively I make an image about you. Find out. So I'm saying, is it my ha- is it this tremendous habit in which we live? Huh? Huh? Influence. Influence. Yes, sir, include that. In- include that. Influence. I'm accustomed, one is so accustomed to being influenced, which is environment and all the rest of it. So I say, is it habit? Is it a tradition that has been handed down? unconsciously, from race to race, from generation to generation? Is it a thing which I have accepted as part of my, as my arm, my accepted leg? It's part of me. It's Sir, does that really answer the question, why, though? That's just saying that we do have an image, but it's why do we have an image? I'm going into that, sir. Come on, Mary. I think it is a continuation of the conditioning 
that we ourselves have received. It's part of our conditioning, inherited from father to son and so on, so on, generation after generation. So just let's find out. So put all this together, habit, immemorial tradition, desire for a sense of nearness and yet withdrawal, all that. Is that why we do it? Do, do look at it. I mean, take a second, darling. Please take a second. Or is it that we want to be certain of my of the girl or the boy, husband or certain of her, certain to possess her? It's mine or not yours. All that's involved in it. Desire for certainty. It's my wife, my girl, my boy, my husband. I'm sure. That is, it gives me certainty in my relationship with another. I know my wife, which is the most absurd statement. It gives me a feeling that I, that I possess something, and I'm sure of that possession. So, habit, tradition, how a million years of tradition, carried from generation to generation to generation. Then the desire to possess, to be dominated, love to be possessed and love to be dominated, a neurotic state, and the desire to be certain. It's my, my house, my table, my pen, my wife. Right. What do you say to all this? We should be free of all that. Huh? We should be free of all that. Come on, madam. Free of all this. We should be, or we are. Ah. Well. I should be on the top of the Himalayas, but I'm not. How can you dis how can you can we talk over together if we are not both moving the same direction? Please. There should be the, is, is non existent. What is is the only fact. Can one not accept this state? Why should I you see you see you see I can't. No, madam, we are doing it. We are doing it step by step, going into this. I am certain about my name. I'm certain about my form, the physical form. I'm certain I'm, I'm qualified mechanically or scientist or professor, or I'm certain. It's my profession. My career, as a military or as a navy or a doctor, is my career, and I'm certain. So I want to be certain in my relationship. No. And when that, and when that certainty is shaken, this begins the trouble. Divorce ends up in divorce, or separation, or whatever you like to call it. So these are the factors that we create these images in order to be sure, certain, in order to possess, and in that possession feel the power, the pleasure, the, the strength of that possession. And 
in there is this inherited thousand million years or million years of man's desire to hold somebody and not let go, and so on and so on. These are the factors in daily life, no? Yes, sir. That's right. I want to be certain. I want to be sure when I come back from the office, she's there. And when she comes back from the office, she wants to be quite sure I'll turn up too. <laughs> this is the game we have been playing for infinitely in varieties of ways. So why do we need the certainty? Huh? That would go in, go go slowly, sir. You are afraid to lose control over her. I hope your wife is there. Look, sir, we are talking about something so tremendously serious. But it is possible, knowing this, knowing these are facts, not imagination, not ideas, not some conclusions which you have got because I have talked about it, but these are daily facts. Now the question is, in that there is no possibility of relationship. You may sleep together, you may hold hands together, do all kinds of things together, but actually there is no relationship. That is a fact, and we don't want to acknowledge it. Because the moment you acknowledge, then begins Doubt, you're frightened, nervous, and all this begins. Now, please just listen. Now, can I learn about myself in my relationship with another? That is the question began, that was the question that was put. In that relationship, I can observe my reactions, right? I like and I don't like. She said a nasty word, he was so pleasant, and so on. My reactions I can watch. Those reactions are myself, aren't they? They are not separate from me, both sensory as well as (coughs) nervous psychological responses. Right? I'm learning my, about myself tremendously as I go along. I've seen oh, infinitely what I'm doing. What I've done, what I'm doing, what I will do tomorrow if I continue this mechanistic way of behaviour. Right? And death comes and says, Darling, I am leaving you. She feels terribly lonely, miserable, unhappy, tears, finds out suddenly she is left alone, or he is left alone. And then he can't face it, he goes off to some entertainment, or goes off with another woman, or whatever it is, or becomes tremendously religious. What game we are playing with each other, huh? Right, sir? So, I see this in fact. I have learned a tremendous lot about myself in my relationship with another. Then the factor arises can this image making stop? You understand my question? Can this momentum 
of the past, of all that tremendous momentum with tremendous volume behind it, like a river with, with great volume of water rushing. Can that can all this mechan- can all this image making tradition deserve all that end without a single conflict? You understand my question? Are you interested in this? What will you pay for it? That's all you can do by paying something you think you'll get it. Now how can this mechanism of image making, not just image making, the desire for certainty, the tradition, the whole structure of that, can that end? Right? Are you asking that question? Or am I asking and putting <laughs> my question on to you? Come on. If you put that question to yourself, do you say, I don't know, therefore I'll find out? Or you are already struggling to find out? Now, how can this image-making come to an end? Which means the ending of registration. Not to register a word that she or he says, the sneer, the insult, the nagging, the all that, not to register at all. Is that possible? You understand my question? Please don't go off to sleep or something. Hmm? I'm asking this question. You have to answer it. Huh? The lady says it's not possible, therefore she shut the door. No, I haven't shut the door, but I find it impossible. At the moment you say it's impossible, it's not possible, or it is possible, you've shut the door. It's like man saying, I can't do it. Finished. I, I, I am sure each one of us can do it. I'm certain, clear if you put your heart and your mind into this question. When you are, when the wife or the girl or the man or the husband says to you, you're rather stupid this morning, must you register that, react to the word? to his feeling, and watch your own reactions to the word and his feeling. You follow? Can you watch all this instantly? Oh, he says, uh, you look very nice this morning. And you, you follow? Go into it, sir. Not to register at all. And now, is this possible? Please, we are talking about learning about oneself in relationship. And we see what, why we create this image and so on. And that, therefore, there is no actual relationship at all. 
They may be physical relationship. Psychologically, obviously, you are totally divided. How can you be related and love another if you are ambitious? You can't. Or competitive, or this or that. So you have learned a tremendous lot in inquiring into this relationship. We have come to the point now when we say, is, is this possible? To not to, to hear the word, not shut off, hear the word, see the meaning of the word, the significance of the word, the, the expression on the face of the man or the woman who says it, and your own reaction to all that. Can you be aware of all that? No, don't keep on repeating, I don't know, then you're stuck. But we started out by saying we create these images. Why we create these images is fairly clear. And we said, next question is, can this image making stop? Then I can say, I don't know. Right? Because then your mind, when you say you don't, is tremendously alert. Yes. You, you are concerned with to find out whether the image making can stop. And you say if it is it's not possible or it's possible, you're stuck. But when you say I don't know, but I'm moving. I'm not when I say I don't know, I'm not static. I'm moving. I'm tremendously active. And full of energy to find out. <coughs> I'm not trying to transmitting my energy to you. You are doing it yourself, please. That is a danger. <laughs> so, is this possible? <coughs> Which means to listen and not register. No, there is no paralysis, madam. You can't paralyse when your relationship with the another is so tremendously important. All life is relationship, <laughs> not just you and me. It's a we are not only you and me. It's a global problem. So we have to meet it globally, not just oh I love my I wonder if you follow you and me. That's too li little affair. When you understand the global issue, then you you will understand the little issue. But if you start with the little issue, you won't understand the global thing. Global in the sense, the enormity of it, which concerns every human being, wherever he may be. So I say, now can I listen to the word? See the expression, the gesture, the contempt, the arrogance, and so on, on the face of the other, and listen to it without any reaction. So I, it depend, now we'll have to find out what you mean by listening. Are we interested in this? Can we go on? No, please, I can go on, but you see, I spent this my life from the age of fifteen at this, right? So please also spend an hour with this. Can I listen? Therefore, what does it mean to listen? Do you ever listen? Are you listening now? Please, you understand? Are you listening to what I'm saying? No, I'm not sure. Or you are listening to a conclusion which you have made about yourself. 
or in listening you have already drawn a conclusion or you have abstracted by from listening an idea and pursuing that idea therefore you are not actually listening so are we listening now that means you are listening without a single movement of thought because you are so tremendously concerned about this. If you are not worried, then you won't listen. If you are deeply, profoundly concerned about this, then your instinct naturally listens. And if you li- so are you listening from your experience are you listening from your from the listening to the word and not to the content of the word or are you listening making an abstraction of what you are hearing into an idea and say yes i've got it which means then that you are listening without any movement any movement of thought any movement movement of intention just listening If that is so, please carefully please hear what I have to say. If you can so listen, when the boy, the girl, or the wife, or the, can you listen to that in the same way? You will say, you're finished. It's sim- It's so terribly simple if you if you capture the simplicity of it. But intellectually, we make such a mess of everything. So, if I know, if there is the act of listening, then there is no registration. The other day of the talk, one of the talks, a man came up to me and said, What a marvellous talk that was! Oh, it was excellent. First, I've got it all. I listened to it very carefully. I've been told this from thousand fifty years, and if I keep on registering how marvelous it is, I'll be a cuckoo. Can you please find out to listen to somebody saying nasty things or pleasurable things so completely that there is no registration? Which means, can you be so attentive at the moment of the word is said that there is no centre which records? You understand my question? Have you ever been attentive? Attentive in the sense giving all your attention, all your energy, your heart, your mind, everything you have. When you do that, there is no me from which you are attentive. There is only attention, right? In that attention, there is no recording. It's only when there is inattention there is the centre which records. Got it? <laughs> you want? So there's no distraction. <laughs> attention. <laughs> so there is no such thing as distraction. No, do please understand this. There is no such thing as distraction. You want to ad- pay attention to that, and you are distracted, as you generally is. Hmm? Which means what? You are not paying attention. Therefore, there is no distraction. So, 
So realize that you are not attentive and therefore distraction. Moment you are aware that you are inattentive, you are already attentive. Capture this. There is no effort is necessary in this. So it is possible not to register at all when the wife says something pleasant or unpleasant, or a friend or a boy, or a girl or a boy, the office, labour, all. So can you live that way? Not for a one day or a few minutes, can you live the entirety of your life that way? Come on, Mera. Huh? Regardless of your age. <coughs> Regardless of my age or your age. <laughs> I don't understand this. Excuse me, sir. When I'm attentive in this way, so we to speak, huh? is the attention limited to the thing to which I'm attentive? No. No. Attention is attention, not limited to this or to that. I'm attentive. There is attention, not tension. <laughs> when you are attentive, there is no tension. So, now wait a minute, now wait a minute, just look at it. The question was about learning, and can one learn about oneself through relationship? We went into the whole thing, step by step, logically, reasonably, sanely. Now, just a minute, listen to this. We went to it very, very carefully, in detail. Now, can you observe this whole thing as a whole, not broken up little pieces? You understand my question? Can you have perception of the entirety of the structure? We have dealt frag each bit by bit, fragment by fragment, or piece by piece. That, that means nothing personal to me, because it's, but if you capture the whole thing, then from that you can work details. But if you cannot, through details, work to the whole. Now, can you, after an hour and twenty minutes or ten minutes or quarter, can you observe this whole phenomenon of registration, learning, relationship as a whole? I mean by whole, having a deep insight into the whole thing, instantly. See, we are not used to that. We are always from, from one thing to another, from one fragment to another fragment, from one broken piece to another, and so gradually build up the whole. We think we have built up the whole, but the whole is not this. The whole is the perception of the whole structure and beyond. Then you can be terribly logical. Killer, he said. What's that? And beyond the structure, you say. Oh, of course. The structure is very, very f fragile. No, but just the attention, is the attention including the structure and going beyond the structure? Yes, sir. When you are attentive, the structure is non existent. You understand? You are missing all this. When you are totally attentive, there is no structure. Right? That attention is meeting the person 
at the same level, at the same time, with the same intensity. The other may not. That's indifferent, that's irrelevant. Your mind is meeting that totally. Then there begins the objection on the other, other person. Hmm? Say, you are indifferent to me, you are this, you are that, and you are. Um, begins. You are not the cause. You understand? I wonder if you see all this. What is being attentive? What? What is being attentive? I will explain, madam. You are not attentive to something, about something, or for something. You are just. Who? Who? What, what is it that is being attentive? There is no you to be attentive. I explain right. that. There is only attention. There isn't another no, no, please. See, you are going off to something. So, have we, at the end of an hour and a quarter, free of the images? If you are not, you haven't been listening. And I, nobody can force you to listen. It's up to you. If you want the present kind of relationship with each other and so with humanity globally that way, it's up to you. But if you want to find out a way of living totally differently, it's also up to you, but you have to listen to everything in yourself, in other. You follow? I think that's enough this morning, isn't it? I don't understand the structure that is here. I'm sorry, I can't understand it. How does the structure disappear when I'm attentive to it? Sir, what makes it I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you. The structure exists without what we mean by structure, which is the desire for certainty, habit, centuries of tradition, and so on. All that is the structure, the picture, the image, which we have made about us. When we are totally attentive, there is no structure, and therefore you are, there is no structure. Therefore you are beyond them, the image making. You tr- just try one thing, just for fun. Next time. Your wife, your husband, your girl or boy says something pleasant or unpleasant, watch it. Just be for that second, watch it. Be attentive for that single m- moment. And then you will see whether you are registering or not. Find, you see, that's what I mean. Find out, try it. it otherwise, you will never find out. Come on. There's contradiction. It seems to me there's contradiction. How can you watch it and be one with it at the same time? For God's sake, explain that. I, I don't quite follow, sir. How can we be here and watch here at the same time? How? G- no, no. We are going off into something, sir. I am saying. that you have listened for an hour, right, sir? An hour and a quarter. You have realised, you understood the mechanistic way of learning, hmm? and a different way of, right? And also, that one can learn about oneself through relationship. We went into that, and more or less. Now, I'm asking, can you be aware of this whole structure first, right? Be aware of it, as you are aware of the colour of the dress of the person sitting next to you. Then be aware that you are separate from that, which is absurd. Therefore, in that awareness you realise there is no division, right? I'm going on, right? And so, in that, in that awareness where there is no division, there begins to be a, 
a sense of great attention. In that attention, which is not your or another, it's just attention. In that attention, the whole structure is non-existent. And I see from that, when your wife or a girl or a boy says something to you, be attentive at that moment and see what happens. <laughs>